The Gareth Edwards Godzilla film from 2014 has a pretty consensus opinion, I feel. As does Roland Emmerich's version, but no need to go into that. That's a lot of fish. When they eventually happen, the monster fights are really cool, it has some satisfying moments, the CG is stellar, but the human stuff is heroically bland and it takes up most of the runtime. It needed more Walter White, and since his name's in the title, we probably should have seen a bit more than 8 minutes of Godzilla in this 2 hour movie. 6 out of 10 maybe? Let's move on. So, why do I own it on Blu-ray and have watched it 3 times this year alone, independent from COVID keeping me indoors? Well. Here's a specific example. This train scene involves bland marine characters who I don't care too much for, transporting a bomb to something somewhere, whilst evading this non-Godzilla monster who we annoyingly seem to see way more than the titular character. With these elements in place, the scene shouldn't really be all that gripping, but it really is because, well, it sounds like this. There are other elements that play throughout this movie that elevate it for sure, including but not limited to some really intelligent blocking. And yes, admittedly, the restraint from showing too much of the big guy makes you savour when he's on screen a lot more. But really, it's what it does to my ears that enables me to enjoy this as much as I do, specifically with the monsters themselves. I mean, all the moments constructed using dynamic and layered soundscapes are done so well, to the point where I can almost entirely forgive the arduous military briefing scenes and cliched family drama, mostly. I mean, this is one way it separates itself from its pooey sequel for sure. Like this moment from the second one is good but kind of underwhelming. It doesn't really feel like there's the right amount of build-up to his roar or the nuclear pulse, mainly because the sounds all sort of blend together with no dynamic interest. The music doesn't particularly stand out either. It's very impressive on a technical level, and hundreds of artists probably spent an ungodly amount of hours to make it look as good as it does. This film's problems certainly go beyond this, but for me, because of the lack of creativity in the sound department, the moment falls flat, unlike this moment in the predecessor, which makes me shit. The cinematography choices provide way more of an impact as well, but dear lord, that full, bassy, satisfying sound effect crescendoing along with the score is so mint. And that brief pause right before the massive belch demonstrates how powerful it can be to have moments of contrast rather than a constant barrage of noise, like, um, this thing here. Sorry, did did that really happen? Can can someone tell me did that did did that really just actually happen? It's moments like this that demonstrate just how much of an impact sound can have, and more specifically how it can elevate or downgrade a project. Which of course extends to music as well, but that's a whole other topic. I remember first learning about sound as part of the filmmaking process from the good old Freddie W in 2010, in a video where he gave some helpful tips on doing action sound design. I would still recommend anyone to go and watch it to this day. It really shows how simple and inexpensive it is to make great sounding stuff when you're starting out, especially when he talks about building Building gunshot sounds using a combination of stock effects. The first sound is a body punch. The second sound is the 
pistol slide going back. The third sound here is another punch. It has a little more crunch to it. Fourth sound is water splashes to kind of simulate what the blood sounds like. And the last sound is, weirdly enough, laser zaps, which is one of my favorite things to layer in with gunshots. But good old Freddy also says this in the video. You can have the coolest effects and the best looking stuff shot on the best cameras, and that only takes you like 95% of the way there for something that's like, you know, that comes off as professional. That extra 5% is the sound. The point he's making is still fundamentally there, and it's a great lesson to know. But I would imagine that the Freddy Wong of today would cringe at hearing his past self saying that sound is 5% of a movie. In fact, the true importance has only been emphasized as time has gone on by various people in different sections of the industry. Sound is the most important thing in your film set. You wouldn't expect it, but it is. It's way more important than your camera department. It's way more important than your image. It's more important than anything else. Good sound makes everything else seem like it was expensive. To say it's overlooked when first starting out is the understatement of the century, and I can tell you wholeheartedly that I'm guilty of it. I've committed sound crimes all the way from setting a road video mic on top of the camera to get 100% of the audio, to using a Samsung Toco to record Pass Out by Tiny Tempter to put in my Scooter Tricks montage. For God's sake, I'm currently talking into a Logitech microphone that my family used to use to play SingStar with on the PlayStation 3. What am I doing? At the end of the day though, sound is hard and way more complex than anyone thinks, and it's incredibly daunting. Sound is different from visuals in the sense that it has to be technically proficient. If your image is overexposed or noisy, you can get away with saying it's meant to be like that. Uh, it, 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 it's experimental, but if you mess up your sound then good luck getting away with that. But we can stop disregarding sound starting today though. Starting at the most basic, if you're shooting something with no equipment, use your phone as a microphone and record it with the built-in voice recording app. Seriously, it sounds stupendous compared to that detestable in-camera mic. Not gonna lie, I don't even know where it is. Point being, the earlier we realize how important and impactful sound is, the better chance we have to avoid it ruining our work or making it much, much better. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm just gonna watch this moment again.